Hey friends, I'd like to welcome you to Neurographic America's spring semester. I'm happy that we started our program this year and um, we have got beautiful teachers teaching in both languages and Russian and English. We do have two separate groups for this semester um, to separate English speaking crowd from Russian speaking crowd. As you know, Neurographica was born in Russia um, by Russian philosopher and psychologist Pavel Piskarev. He's also an architect. So he created this unique method and the method was created in Russian language. And now it's marching all over the world. Uh, people teaching uh, in Hebrew, uh, in English, in German language. Hopefully soon we're going to start teaching in Spanish language and in French language. So we do have a huge plans for spreading neurographic around the world. Uh, um, I'd like to welcome you and uh, let me just share our welcome note. So, um, I'm sharing with you our logo, Neurographica America, School of Creating and Transformative Arts. I just want to spend a couple of minutes talking about this. Um, Neurographica America was born last year. Uh, we're still in the process of finalizing our nonprofit organization, uh, but um, already started functioning. Uh, and um, uh, we already have uh, had one conference where we invited our creator, uh, Pavel Piskarev, we in, invited some other people, and I think that was a great success because we've been um, observing that lots of people got a lot of interest from all over the world. We, we've got people joining from different countries, from Canada, from Germany, from Switzerland, from Israel. So it was pretty amazing uh, how fast we've got beautiful responses from people. And um, now we believe that we need to start putting together programs and uh, spring semester is a wonderful time. First of all, the winter season is over, right? We all feel energized. We feel kind of excited. Things are looking uh, brighter, better, right? We're all looking forward towards summer. And I think the best way to prepare for summer is to go for our program because we have lots of things to offer to you. And uh, as much as you learn during the spring semester, the more you can utilize during the summertime. Because during the summertime, everyone goes away. People want to spend time somewhere in upstate, in different countries. People go all over the places. Uh, there will be no classes, maybe some free classes we can offer during the summertime. But um, I think what we're trying to do to prepare you for the really fantastic time that you're going to have during summer Plus, you will have some creative moments with Neurographica where you can take your albums, you can take your markers, your colored pencils, and start drawing your beautiful life, right? As you know, Neurographica is only 1% therapeutical. Uh, it is when we are learning algorithm of lifting inner limitations. And the rest of that 99% is coaching. Aesthetic coaching, analytical coaching, we are teaching you how to build your bright future. Isn't that amazing? And what I, I particularly love about this method, uh, that you, while you creating beautiful artwork while you're learning, and that makes a huge difference because some people, they don't really want to go through transformation because it seems boring to them. They're not excited about the process, but here you have a full excitement about the process. Um, if, if you think about it, right, you've never been drawn before or like you did it 20 years ago. Some people haven't been drawn for 40 years and all of a sudden you are um, basically getting involved into the art process. And guess what? You can even create canvases. You can create beautiful paintings uh, with this method. I personally do. Uh, if you're familiar uh, with my own page, uh, I, I'm posting my own stuff and I know all our uh, teachers uh, all started uh, getting engaged into a uh, newer art and um, we're seeing a lot of beautiful things going on. Um, psychology is one thing, we know that psychology is a huge component of Neurographica, but artistic component we should never discard. It should be always fun, easy way to learn, uh, no hard pressure, 
We really take our time learning and that's how we manage our classes. So with Neurographica Americas as a non-for-profit organization, we've been uniting people, neurographic lovers, people who love Neurographica, people who would like to learn, who, become, who want to become instructors teaching in different languages. We're gonna unite people like this. And for me, it is super exciting because I'm a president of the company. And uh, when I see people approaching to me, asking if they may join us, uh, they express a lot of excitement about opportunities. I get excited as well, right? Because for me, it's very important to uh, work with people who are uh, charged, who really truly believe into this method. And that makes the whole difference. Because when people are skeptical, and they kind of like, they tried, but from the first time it didn't work, they have a tendency to give up immediately without trying again. And then, you know, it's not my job to convince people that this met method really works. My job is to show people a way and whether or not people are gonna accept it, it's a different story, right? And that's the whole concept of our entire school Neurographic Americas. We are showing the way. That's why we're doing the whole month of March is a free workshops and se seminars and lectures. That's how we decided, we said, look, we have to start by giving people opportunity to get familiar before running into paid programs. So welcome again. I'm happy to have you here with me. Uh, now when I'm showing uh, our logo and our welcome note, um, you guys just know that there is such, a th such thing as Neurographic Americas. It is kind of brand new, and it's the first English-speaking neurographic school in the world. Imagine opportunities that people may have with us if they decide so. All right, so let me just go back to, um, to my screen. Let me stop sharing. And I see uh, Vasilisa. Hi, Vasilisa. I'm happy to see you. Um, uh, I know lots of people traveling from work right now. And as I said, there is no pressure. I know that we'll be recording. You guys are gonna be watching in the recording and this is the great way to learn. I've learned almost all Neurographica via recording because Russia and United States has a huge time difference. And I figured if I'm not gonna learn through the recording, then there is no way I can learn at all. And that's the beauty of the modern world, right? We don't have to be bound by space time, people, we can really turn on computers and just go to YouTube or go to Facebook where all the videos are and watch them at your own time, right? Fantastic, fantastic. I'm so glad we live in these beautiful times when it's possible. All right, so saying that, the topic of our class is uh, ABC of Neurographic, right? I just want you to get familiar with the elements and also see how these elements can interact with each other and why we're using triangles here and circles there and squares there, right? Everything has a meaning. Nothing is just for nothing. Uh, we're gonna talk about this and we're gonna talk about beautiful line called Neurographic Line. Uh, Pavel Piskarev, the author of this method, is actually um, created a patent for this line. I think he's the first person in the world who actually was able to create a patent for this, for his line. Amazing, again. Um, but you will experience this magic uh, yourself. Uh, whoever is with me today and people who's gonna be watching and recording, you guys just gonna get introduced to this magical way. Uh, I know some people already, like Vasilisa, she already knows the basic, but she, she came because every time we're learning something else. You know, I've been watching and re-watching videos, free videos and paid videos of my master, Pavel Piskarev, and I still find something new every time. And every time he teaches different as well. New aspects, new perspective. Uh, we're all transforming, we're changing every day. So he brings a lot of fresh blood to the method. Um, method grows itself. New algorithms getting born. Uh, all together, it's just ever growing method. And I love it because uh, it really becomes a process work. We're not really stagnating somewhere in enclosed space and enclosed time where we learned this and now we're bounded to this knowledge. It should not be this way. Even though it's taught this way today, maybe in a year, the whole concept is gonna 
get transformed. So we really need to be open, open-minded, and uh, just follow what's going on in your graphic world in order to be current. Because some instructors who got educated a couple of years ago, and right now they're re-watching videos of this year, let's say, of our master, they're getting a little bit confused because, oh my God, that's not how we learned it. Well, the method as like people develops and uh, uh, changes. We just need to be uh, going, uh, uh, follow the growth of this method and kind of go uh, hand in hand with time, right? All right, so enough talking. You know, usually we don't talk much. Uh, when we do Neurographica, we are all uh, practitioners. The practical well, way of learning is uh, our thing. So let's just switch to um, drawing board and we will continue our conversation. For one second, I'm going to disappear and reappear. All right, so we are back. My camera is getting focused. Okay, let's just see. I just want to make sure. Uh, just, I, I just want to say a couple of things. We are right now in the Mercury retrograde. People who believe in astrology and follow what's going on. When we are in the Mercury retrograde, when Mercury, the planet Mercury, goes backwards, right? It's just an impression it creates. Actually, it never goes backwards but it's just an impression that it creates. Lots of things uh, happening technically. Uh, like the other day, I just talked about this and my whole system went down. So if for any reason my system would go down or I will use Wi-Fi, just know, please reconnect in a couple of minutes, we're gonna continue. Uh, amazing, but this is true. And every time I experience this, I know it's a Mercury retrograde, but still I'm getting surprised. So don't get surprised if it happens, but let's just pray it, it, it wouldn't. Right, we want to have a good peaceful class if no interruption, and that's it. All right, so guys, let's talk about what we call ABC of neurographic. Let's first talk about shapes. Um, in neurographic, we, we are using very simple shapes. Uh, they are let's start with circle. Circle in neurographic. We are trying to draw as circular as possible, close to the shape as much as possible. I know in the beginning when we start, some people draw ovals, some people draw eggs, but we should strive. We should try to get to the point where our circles look a lot like actual circles. They don't look anyhow else. Uh, it takes time, it takes experience, so don't kill yourself if your circles look not perfect. They will never be perfect. Even this circle is not perfect. You see, somewhere it's thicker, somewhere it's thinner. It has some, you know, you could see imperfections, but it is close to the circle of shape. And that's what I'm talking about. You know, the only perfect shape you can do is with compass. Compass will give you a perfect shape. Here you trying to get as perfect as possible to the actual circle of shape. And what is that shape? What, why are we starting with circle, right? Circle is a holistic figure. Uh, people who study um, uh, sacral geometry, people who into um, some esoteric practices, they all know that any shape can fit, circle can fit any shape, triangle, a square, um, any, any shape, whatever you could think about, uh, they all fit into circle. Uh, that's why we call it holistic figure. And neurographic could be using circles more than any other figures. Uh, and what Biskarov says, if you know how to draw a circle, you're already in a pretty good shape uh, drawing neurographica, right? Because with circle, uh, we're using a circle as a symbolic language. We can define circle. I could say, it's me, or it's my mother, or my son, or my job, or it could be my teacher, or teaching, everything, um, um, any subject can be defined uh, by circle, if you think. And in Neurographica, we're using symbolic language of the forms. And the reason for this is because, first of all, we want to get as graphical as possible. It is a graphical um, work that we're using. And it is an abstract wor uh, work as well. We're getting images. 
uh, from time to time. But the main concept of this practice is create a ab beautiful abstract drawing. Um, we're going to talk about colors a little bit later and uh, draw shapes in, in the right way. Okay, so think about circle is the perfect shape, is a holistic shape that you, you can always, always use. Like you cannot spoil, let's say, if you um, eating cereal or uh, if you are eating something that you really like and you're putting some cream or you can put in some milk you cannot spoil it right because you you like it you like it to be creamy same thing with neurographic you cannot spoil neurographic with circles you can have as many circles as possible yet i personally see that some people may get addicted to circles because it feels so good they don't want to get out from circular shape sometimes i i challenge this students and i tell them you know what try not to draw circles draw something else uh, but that's for their own goodness, because if they really get hooked on circles, then our jobs as instructors to make sure that they're not, they are out of that. Um, because the brain gets tendency to um, cling towards uh, what makes it happy, right? And if circle makes brain happy, then brain doesn't want to get out of it. And then a person becomes a slave of the brain and starts drawing the circle all over the place. And that's not what we want, okay? So the next shape is um, square. It's a square. Square has a beautiful meaning of support, of stability, right? When we say square, we're thinking about a table, right? Or we're talking about uh, a bag, could be like a squared shape that contains some stuff. Uh, when are we using square in neurographical? We're using square when we're talking about financial support, support of our family, stability, right? It gives that because it equals four, if you think about four sides, and four is always stability, something that uh, really gives a sense of not being alone, loved, uh, something that supports us in everything what we do. Okay, that's square. And the third figure is triangle. Let me just something pops up here and I just want to remove it and I'm gonna mute everyone. All right, so the next figure is triangle. And triangle has a dual meaning in neurographica. You see that? You see how and some people get panicky and they think, oh my God, look, I drew it and then this side is longer. So what? Neurographic lines, we're gonna talk about it, right? That's how you deal with this. Uh, so triangles are, um, they're having a dual meaning. Triangles are auction, they verbs, tra um, to, to travel, to draw, to desire, to build, um to cook anything that you could think about and also nouns that has some actions within them travel right um what else it could be um, i'm trying to just think quick um build oh um building let's say could be also a triangle because building involves a lot of uh, efforts to build and and so forth. So things that defined as action as a verb could be defined as triangle, but triangle can also be defined as aggression, as um, some uh, harsh action, right? Like a war is also triangle, right? And we know the war has negative connotation. So if you uh, using triangles, you you really need to be careful with them not to be afraid of them, not to be overly cautious about them, but uh, more like really, really uh, understanding the meaning, right? Understanding that you should not overdo triangles and also understand that triangles needs to be used really for something that defines action, right? Uh, spiritual development, is it a triangle? I would think so because it has certain vector from the past to the future and it just goes up, right? With its point, up, 
and its triangle. Development, development, transformation, right? Here's a good example of the noun with the action. Transformation is triangle. Um, of course, for most people, travel would make much more sense. And also work, right? It's a noun. Um, we go to work. Or I am at work right now, right? But work is an action, right? We know that somebody who is at work, they're doing something there. Well, there are people who don't do anything at work, but we're, we're not counting them. Um, so triangle needs to be used careful uh, and uh, carefully and also uh, not overdoing on that. Some people who uh, don't have a lot of energy, they sometimes overdo triangles because it brings them up. What, they, what we recommend, if people feel like they don't want to get up from their bed, what, what we're saying to them, why don't you um, please mute yourself? I'm going to mute you. And I'm going to ping myself to the screen. Um, so uh, some people who don't get up from their bed, you know, we know some people have a chronic fatigue syndrome or people who like maybe a little bit depressed, they're losing interest in life. So what we're telling them, draw triangles. Why? Because this angular shape really gives a lot of energy. It brings a lot of um, kind of like a pointy feeling that can bring people out of bed and give them ability to act. Again, the verb is very important when it comes to triangle, right? It's a verb or something that relates to the verb, right? If this is stability, for the most part, support, and this and the circle is a holistic figure, right? Then this is a verb, right? So those are three main figures that we're using. We're also using spirals, but the spirals, it's a separate class. So I'm not really focusing on spirals. And spirals really a complex figure because it really depends how you're drawing the spiral. Are you drawing from the center out, outward or you're drawing from the outward towards the center, right? And also depends which direction your spiral goes, this direction or uh, clockwise or counterclockwise. So that's why we're not looking at spirals. And then for beginners, we don't even recommend uh, drawing spirals, but people have a tendency. I see in my students what they do because they look attractive, those spirals. People put them all over the place without any meaning. Uh, in neuro art, probably it is acceptable, but let's say in algorithm of uh, lifting inner limitations, I would not recommend doing it at all because you don't, because people are not familiar with the spiral, yet they're putting them all over the place and then they surprise nothing works. Well, it's because it depends how you draw your spiral, right? If you're not drawing it in the right way, applicable to your situation, then don't expect algorithm to work. Okay, so those are the figures. Um, what else I should say? Um, again, I've mentioned already in your graphic line, right? And uh, I just wanted to show you what it is and how to draw it. And why, why, what is so special about near graphic line? Let's talk about what is not near graphic line first. Let's just draw something like that. This is definitely not a neurographic line. Why? Because it has a repetitive element here, right? Or something like this. People, some people draw like this, right? Um, no, uh, this is not neurographic line because it has a repetitive element. And it also goes, right, the vector of the movement, let's say from left to right, I can do from top down, just like that. And that would not be a neurographic line either because it has repetitive element. It also moves to the direction that I expect the line to move. In your graphic line, first of all, it doesn't form any pattern. You will not find any repetitive pattern in the neurographic line. It always looks different. It moves where we don't expect it to see. This concept sometimes for people is very difficult to grasp. What does it mean that I don't expect it to see? You're drawing from left to right in this case, so I expect that it's going to go 
uh, here. But if you think about it, when you do it slowly, it becomes a meditative process of drawing. And then you draw and you move to the right. Your hand goes to the left. You don't let your hand just do whatever it wants. You really draw it with control. Everything should be drawn with control. Where are you just moving your hand to the left or the right, and then you end up somewhere. I didn't know I'm gonna end up here. I could have uh, finished it somewhere here, right? But notice the difference between those lines that are forming the pattern and those lines that are curvy, those lines that don't form any patterns, and those, um, uh, and you see the difference. The vector is unknown when we start. Um, uh, the vector is unknown. I'm putting on mute the new people who just arrived. Um, uh, the vector is unknown, right? That's what I said. And also, there is no repetitive pattern within this line. Try it. Try it, right? Just uh, try to draw something. People have a tendency, look, sometimes people start doing this. Specifically, when people start drawing, right? In, in the beginning, why do people do this? Because they have a high level of anxiety, because they don't have enough experience of doing this type of drawing. Also, they have a resistance. Our brain is not used to this kind of lines. Our brain loves this. Brain likes control, and brain loves when we see patterns. Why? Because for the brain then feels comfortable. Brain, brain tells you, oh, okay. Um, here I'm totally comfortable. I know what you're going to do next. Here brain doesn't know what we're going to do next. We start the process. We don't know. We're tricking the brain by going to the left. Then we're going to the right. Then we do straight. Then we're going to, uh, to the bottom. Then we go up and so forth. We're tricking our brain. So brain gets confused. And what happens then? Brain uh, creates a resistance towards this process. Some people complain that they're getting headaches. Some people are reporting that um, they start getting nauseous. It could happen in the beginning. Experienced neurographers, uh, they usually don't experience much of that when they draw just lines, when they're working on algorithm of removing inner limitations or any other algorithms. Yes, they may experience some negative um, feelings in the body, but it's good. It's good. You know how Piskarov says, when somebody says, oh, I feel nauseous, then Piskarov is saying, that's wonderful. I'm glad you feel nauseous. Then you're releasing something out of your system. Your system resists, and that's why you feel nauseous. But you know it's good for you. <laughs> so uh, when you look at something like this, right, you see the person has a high level of anxiety. Uh, and then what we actually ask people to do what and how they can correct this whole thing they can draw another line right on top to smooth things out to correct the drone because people get anxious they say oh my god i spoiled the whole drone with my pointy lines what i'm gonna do now i have to throw the whole thing out no they don't they can just double triple and so forth to correct this like like kind of like some movement that creates this anglish uh style line right they can correct it with just that right some other things what i see people during um, um specifically when they get into a uh, known neurographica and they already know how to draw the line but they getting in rush they're like okay i'm working my relationship my husband drives me crazy i just want to quickly dissolve my catharsis in the uh, algorithm of lifting inner limitations let me do it so they do catharsis and guess what they're doing next instead of drawing slowly because near a graphic line they like slow movement they don't like rush when you're rushing you're creating patterns that's what i see sometimes okay because they rush oh i want to dissolve my catharsis i want to dissolve my catharsis i want to dissolve my look, look what happens repetitive movement and the vector is defined so that those are most common mistakes that i see that uh, people make because they are rushing into the process they're not breathing 
And we know that the line is connected with the breath. That's the next thing I want to talk about. How's the line connected with the breath, right? And why it has to be done slowly. So when we go up, it doesn't matter if you go from the bottom up or you go di diagonally up, you take a breath, you breathe in, and you start the process, and then you breathe out, and you just breathe normally. See? It's like a wave that goes up and down, like a wave, and it has a bionic meaning. What does it mean, bionic? The line is just like a river. It's like nature, right? Form of natural things, like a crown of the tree, right? It's like a road, you know, when we get up, uh, high above, right, in the plane. We see how roads are, right? They're like snakes. Even snakes, snake, it looks like snake has a pattern where it moves. No, but it's different every time. It's just sometimes we don't notice it. So we really want to keep the bionic uh, quality of the line um, real. We don't want to rush into the process and we want to breathe. This is rushing. I can tell right away. Even, you see, right away, it creates repetitive element, right? Here, maybe person started drawing well, but then, ha, ha, ha rush through the process. We can't do that. We really need to get into meditative mode, get into the slowness and enjoy the beauty of the moment. Enjoy it. You are slowing down into half meditative state where you draw your lines. And then later, uh, later we're going to talk about crossings of the lines and figures and how you can smooth out this entire crossing and why we need to do it. But first thing first, you need to get slower, slower. You know, people, sometimes I see my students, they start drawing slow, then they become impatient. Nah? And I tell them, stop, stop right there. Don't move. Go back, breathe. <sighs> Take a breath and then go and then, and then uh, breathe normal. Or if they go down, right? Because we, sometimes we need to go down, like an algorithm of sh uh, shamanic uh, rain, right? Uh, we really need to go down. Then you do exhale. <sighs> and then you breathe normal. Line is connected with the breath. This is uh, the way to draw it. To draw slowly, to draw with control. We never let our hand do whatever hand wants. Uh, I hear some instructors, they're teaching like this. They're saying, oh, just let your hand go. No, no, it's misconception. We never, never let our hand go. Once you get into automating, or automated mode, that's what you get instead of this, right? Here you keep the full control over the situation. You move and you go to the right and you go to the left. You go up and down. You really need to watch that you're not creating any pattern and then it becomes neurographic, okay? And if you go up, take a breath. And then breathe normally. You took a breath, you started your process with inhale, and then you draw normally, just like that, okay? That would be near graphic line. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is the crossing of lines and uh, shapes. So what happens when two lines cross? Let's just look at on a big scale what's going on. So we draw two lines. Let's do more than two. Let's do. Okay, so let's say you have some lines, right? By the way, we never leave lines like this hanging. I just want to show you how to round things and then I'm gonna continue them so they don't just hang like this. In your graphical pattern, we never allow things just to hang uh, without finishing, without connecting the ends towards the edges of your paper or towards other lines. So what do we do when the lines cross, right? Or if the shapes cross, let's say, what if you have a shape here on top of this? What do you do? And what really makes neurographic drawing neurographic pattern? You see what I'm doing here? I'm, I'm actually adding neurographic line just to activate it a little bit. 
You can do that as well. You can add neurographic line right on top of your shape, makes it more active. So it doesn't uh, stay um, kind of static in its own shape. So you can always add it if you want. And then what we do, we round things up. How do we do this? Let's see, let's take a look at, at the big picture. What we do, we like sort of trying to uh, incorporate circles at the places where we have crossing, right? We don't draw where you see these lines. We don't draw uh, them as circles. We just draw this part. You're gonna see how we do it. And then we color, we smooth it out. You see how smooth it is? Here we have crossing on four corners. I'm not gonna do this part of the, of the rounding. I'm just gonna do that. You see, half circle here half circle here, there, and here. And that's how you rounded it. And now you need to color. I'm gonna talk about common mistakes as well that I see with this particular process. But that's how you round things up. And sometimes when you're trying to correct some imperfections, um, you need to thicken lines in order to uh, do a good rounding. That's how it looks like. Here with the shapes, it's exactly the same thing. You just need to um, uh, create half circles and color them just like that. And you have to color them well. You see that? Here is the same thing. Not, not perfect square here. It's a circular, right? It has to be rounded. Let me finish this line. Okay. Here, half circle, half circle. Not even half, maybe one third of the circle. You see that? And that's how you round everywhere where your lines or shapes are crossing with each other. You can double the line here. You see that how beautiful it is? Immediately what happens when we do this? When we do something like this, we're creating a neurographic pattern. Nothing exists really on its own when we're looking at this. Everything is interconnected. Everything is interwoven here. And that is definitely a neurographic pattern. We know that the edges of our paper are not the ending of the drone. You can always add more paper on each side and continue drawing, drawing to the infinity, right? This is something important to remember. So your line goes somewhere here to the potential field of quantum physics, right here. It just goes, we don't see it, it disappears in the quantum world. Um, so that's how we do it. And the way we end our lines, let's say if something is hanging like this, what you could do, you could connect with uh, another line, just like this, but guess what? Then you need to round up here right or you could just finish by connecting it with the uh, edge of the paper just like that see that that's how i'm ending up my um my lines right so the rule number one in neurographica the quality of neurographic work is defined by the quantity of the lines the quality of neurographic work is defined by the quality of the uh, of the quantity i'm sorry of uh, of the lines as many lines if you draw a thousand lines or if you draw five thousand lines those two drawings can really dramatically differ from each other why because the more lines you have in your drawing the better the quality of your work is so it's interesting the quantity and quality relationship here is amazing um I've, I've learned on my uh during my own experience when i just started neurographica and what i see in majority of my students when they begin they don't have enough lines in their drawings sometimes they have like maybe twice more than here and they're really saying oh my god i have so many lines on my drone and then i tell them no no you don't you really need to try to draw as many as possible um, and you know, with time they understand and they adding much more lines, but in the beginning, it seems to us that we have enough. 
uh, but the more we draw, the more we understand that uh, we need to add more, 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 and more. So let's just add another shape. I'm going to add square. Let's add a shape. And I'm adding a square. Try to make it as square as possible. And what we do with square, we round the corners inside first. So they don't look sharp. They don't really poke us. We smooth them out with this. Just like that. Okay, that's the first thing we do. Now the next thing we do, we round it with everything what it crosses from all sides. Everything should be rounded. Whatever is crossing needs to be rounded. We try to round as, as many of the crossings as possible. We should strive to round all of them. And what do we do with these hanging corners? We can connect them to another lines, just like that, like I did. You see that, number one? And here it's a little bit, we need to round also. We can do it towards the end of the drawing of our um, paper, right? And we could connect it to the line over here, and we can connect it to the shape over here. We can connect to the shape, to the shape as well, just like that, but you need to round everywhere it touches. That's it, we incorporate it. Here we see something is left. We need to really round up right here. Okay, and th those were circles from something that I was showing you in the beginning and we can add more circles here. So they look like real circles, not just uh, circles that um, look like that they don't belong to the pattern, right? We really need them in a way, drawn in a way that they belong to neurographic pattern. You see? And those little circles always make neurographic pattern look really nice, neat. You know, sometimes we see work with a bunch of circles, small ones, like little bubbles. It really, immediately the work looks very nice and cute. Um, now let's let's look at a triangle. Let's try to incorporate triangle here. Let me add another neurographic line so it doesn't look that it's almost empty. Our whole page is almost empty. I like when we have enough of the lines, right? Slowly, I have added another line. What do I need to do in this case? I need to round up. I need to round it. Okay. I need to round. I need to round here as well. Wherever it's crossing, we need to round, round it, this up. So, um, and let's just draw a triangle. You can do your own way. You don't have to repeat after me uh, the way my figures look like. You really need to draw your triangles, your circles, your square, right? And again, we do the same thing here. We need to round up the corners. And what else we need to do? We need to round up crossings of the shapes and the lines. And we also need to connect triangle hanging parts towards other lines. All surrounding things up. Or towards the end of your paper. Okay, here's another rounding. So the mistakes that people do with the rounding, let me just add another line so you know how it works. Sometimes people do rounding, not thinking much. They do shapes like this, like they're putting some sort of clip or something that doesn't really look right. In this case, it's possible to change it. It's possible to uh, uh, make a correction here 
um, but it requires some effort to make it smooth than to color, make it thicker, right? Make it thicker and make it more smooth. Better to um, have a thicker way of rounding than to have something that has angles and those angles are really killing us. They poking at us. They like tri little triangles created. So that's the way to smooth it out. It doesn't look super pretty, but it's better to have something like that than to have totally like the form that we can even define. Okay, so something to watch out and be careful about. You can always add the circle. You see like we have a line and we have like half so circular shape. When you see it, you can always add the circle just like that. And round it up. Look how pretty, how pretty it looks. You can even add another line here. And then it's gonna look even prettier. Okay? So that's how you work with this. And you can add it for your work. You can add circles, you can add more circles, you can add smaller circles, bigger ones, you can add some squares, you can add triangles. And now what we need to do, we need to color. And the way we color in Neurographica, I'm usually using right now at least, you know, people who know me, I've been teaching for a while already. I'm using Prismacolor. I like Prismacolor. Um, they have a beautiful quality. And for the marker, I use paper make markers. They have nice point. It's not too thin, it's not too thick. So um, I prefer this material. Some people prefer some others. I'm only uh, telling you what I like. Um, so we're gonna take some colors and for the beginnings who have resistance towards colors, what I tell them, just, you know, let me show you. What I tell them, if you have resistance towards the colors, just like this, and that's what I'm gonna do. And take first three, not without even thinking. You can always add a couple more, but at least you I already selected my uh, coloring um, segments here that that's what I'm gonna be using, okay? I can add yellow, I think yellow is always good to have, and maybe some orange. Okay, but at least I already know how I'm going to start because people sometimes have a lot of resistance and they spend so much time trying to figure out what would be the best way to color. Just do like that. If you don't know, if you know it's good, but if you don't, don't kill yourself over that. It's fine. So, the way we color in Neurographica, we are coloring within the segments of the drone. What do I mean by that? You see, I'm not just coloring like this. I am coloring within the boundaries that marker creates. And usually I'm taking two, three, four, five, six sometimes segments in order to color. Why? Because in neurographic pattern, we're really looking for integration, integration of all parts. With coloring like this, you see this one, two, three, four, smaller segment, five. One, two, three, four, five segments color together in one color, okay? And I guess here I'm gonna also add some more. So we're creating large figures, right? Because we color this part, the large figure is created with one color. And now I'm gonna take another one and I'm gonna color it over here, I'm just showing you the way you should be considering coloring. Two segments together I'm coloring. Probably I'm gonna add more. You see that? Here's my third segment. And here I want to color as well in yellow color. Usually when we use one color, um, then we're using a second color. Um, I'm sorry, we're going to be using the same color somewhere else on the drawing. So I use my yellow here, I'm using it right here as well. And here I'm going to have three seg segments colored in one color. Why three? One, two, three. Okay. And now I would need to add more of the blue and I'm looking and uh, intuitively 
I'm not really spending too much time thinking where I'm gonna add my blue. I just wanna add it here. I don't know why, just because I want to. I want to add it here. Okay, and maybe I'll add it somewhere else. Maybe I'll add it over here. And please remember, you don't have to color the entire thing. You coloring uh, in a way that it makes sense to you. Don't color everything what you see here. Probably my drawing is going to be minimalistic in terms of coloring. And now I'm going to start drawing red. Some people using highlighters. My teacher uses highlighters a lot because it's an easy way of um, coloring things and it creates very nice smooth color. Here, look, I'm, I'm doing it a little bit in a 3D kind of feeling. I'm making it darker here and then towards the end, I'm making it less dark so it looks more like a pale. I'm gonna do emphasis here making darker i don't know it all comes intuitively it comes intuitively don't spend too much time thinking should i color in this color should i color in that color it all should come intuitively and it has to be smooth the way we color it if you see that your pencil goes a little bit wild with creating lines you have to smooth it out okay um and that's what you do you intuitively coloring every segment here we've got three segments here i'm going to call it the fourth segment okay already you know some mood is created here i don't know yet what it is but for me it's just i like it i like it i like that feeling that this, this drone gives me, you know, when we start coloring, we feel already uplifted with our work. In the beginning, you may not like very much your selections of the colors, but then time passes by and then the more we draw, the more we color, the more we like what we do. And then all of a sudden you will have an arch to create beautiful new art, Right, I do have a class on your art as well in March. So something like that, right? And now here's my third color that I selected. I'm gonna be doing here. So you're coloring in a way that it makes sense to you. And we should really color at least two segments. We don't just color one segment. Why? Because we need to create large figures with that. It's like that. You see that? You see how easy it is? And I, I didn't spend that much time thinking about should I color this color or should I color in that color? I'm just coloring and that's it. I'm coloring. And that's how you should do too. Don't spend too much time. Oh, I have resistance. I don't the, like the color I selected. You work with what you have. You work with what you have. You can color just like that. You don't have to finish the whole thing. You don't have to really. And I'm sampling here. I'm not going to color the entire thing because it's a sampler. Just to show you how you should be working with the elements, uh, with creating patterns and so forth. This one is a little bit light. You know, if you see that your uh, selection is too light, then probably you want to change it to something darker. It's the same marker, but it's darker and it's like yellowish. It's not as yellow as the other one, but it has some different glow. Okay. And I'm going to color here so it's not only one element that is colored. Okay, and that's what you do. And that's how you create your neurographic pattern. And then it shines through. 
Here we only add a couple of figures. Uh, what I would do on this drawing, I would add more figures. I would probably add larger circle, just like that. And you can always add up as many circles or as many other shapes as you want. That's the beauty of Nero Graphica. If you feel like you don't have enough of shapes, you can always add up, make it thicker, add Nero Graphic line around to activate, totally fine. Okay, you can add more of squares, just like that. You know, some people just afraid doing it. They saying, oh, I already created my pattern. Why would I even consider adding more? Up to you. Nobody's gonna tell you don't, right? If you want to, you can add. If you don't feel like this, don't. But nobody can tell you. You really need to think for yourself and select yourself. You see that? And then add more color, add more color. And I want more triangles, maybe one triangle looking here. I encourage my students to try. I encourage my students to see how they feel. Some people feel disturbed. They saying, oh, I created pattern. Now I've added another triangle and now my heart is beating up harder. You know, Triangles just like that, they can make heart beating faster, but nobody's going to get heart attack because of that. It's just the way triangles are. Or any other shapes, right? It's impossible to spoil neurographic work. You can add more and more and more and more figures, and then your whole drawing is going to look really delicious and beautiful. Add more colors, right? Add more circles. And your circles, they don't have to finish here on the paper they can just go to infinity just like that look you see that and then you need to smooth it up the neurographic line and the line can be added not only to the circles it can be added to shapes just like that to activate the shape so shape starts vibrating specifically when our shapes have a meaning if we want to create a pattern using shapes as a symbolic kind of encoding of our drawing it's it makes sense to name all the shapes triangle is a travel circle is maybe a nice hotel i'm just giving you simple examples right you can do that you can do part of the figures which is totally fine your square may look like this why why it is okay to have square like that? Because the edges of your paper don't add and the drawing. It goes to the infinity and beyond. It goes to the quantum world. Everyone assumes that it is a square, but now you have to connect. You really need to connect your square with the rest of the drawing. So experiment, see for yourself what you like, what you don't like. Does it work for you to pick the colors in a blind way? Just pick and that's it and work. It's just an experiment for you to play around with elements, to play around with colors, pencils, and also same thing with the marker. I'm using blue one, uh, but um, classical way of using marker is the black marker. But uh, lately I even see the Pavel using, Pavel also uses uh, some multicolored markers. I guess everyone gets tired from time to time the same thing and they want to change it see that that would be near graphic pattern all right my darlings um i'm gonna unmute you go back to um the screen so you can ask me questions if you have any uh let me just disappear for one second so i can switch my camera All right, guys, if you have any questions, please ask me. It's a wonderful opportunity right now to do that. Anybody? Not at this point. It's okay. Somebody speaking? I cannot hear. I can't hear. 
All right, that's fine, guys. So you know where to find us. You know where to find me. Uh, Neurographic Americas, please like our page. Um, sign up in our groups, right? Make sure you are in Neurographic America group. Um, show your drawings. I'm gonna be showing my drawing as well. I need to finish it, it's not finished. Uh, and let's just get in touch. Let's just keep our communication open. And um, let's work together towards growing the school, making sure we, uh, we have interesting classes, attend our classes, and uh, let's just um, have a lot of fun together. I see from Vasilisa, she's thanking me. Uh, oh, <laughs> that's fine, Vasilisa, I know, I know you. You're wonderful, I love your drawings. Um, so let's just keep in touch, guys. Thank you so much, namaste to all of you. Uh, stay healthy, happy, and creative. Thank you, guys. Bye now.